Hey, what's up everybody? Ryan Nelson here. I've been working through a bit of a challenge with some reflections and I wanted to share with you guys how I've worked through them right after this. So reflective objects come in a lot of different forms, not just your standard pots and pans and forks and knives and things that you're probably thinking of when you're shooting reflective objects. I do a lot of packaging photography, which leads to a lot of just little tiny areas of reflections that you have to get the reflection of that need to be lit completely differently than the rest of the box. All right, so what I've been working on today is I've been shooting this box, which has a very textured top. It also has a logo that is reflective and the shorts on the mouse is reflective as well. But I need two different qualities of light to show off both of those textures. So let me show you how I do it. I've got three different ways. Okay, here's a quick little tip looking at this setup. If you don't have a really tall tripod, put your set on the floor. That way you can just use pretty much any tripod gets high enough to shoot down onto the floor. So to start off, I've got a light that's shining straight across the top of these. It's down pretty low to so pick up the textures of the box tops. This is a very fine texture if you're actually looking at it in person. So it's kind of hard to pick up these textures sometimes. If you put a soft box right over this box, it's gonna flatten everything out and you're hardly gonna see that texture at all. So I'm using a direct light that's down low, just raking right across the top. It makes the top look great, but we're not seeing much of that reflection in the logo. All right, the first way to get this reflection, and it might be the most common when shooting reflective objects, is to get a big white card back there or a big soft box to give some really soft light, soften up that uh, metallic finish or your metal or your reflection, whatever you're trying to do. But again, this goes back to the big soft box is just putting light everywhere and it's flattening out the texture. So I don't think this is gonna work for this particular shot. Try it for other shots. Sometimes it works beautifully. Sometimes you need to do something else. Here, I wanna do something else. Okay, the second method you can use is to get silver cards to reflect light right back into that area where you want the reflection to show. This is a silver card. If you don't have silver cards, you can use uh, metal that you can find in the ductwork aisle of your home improvement store, or you can take foam core or a solid piece of cardboard and wrap some aluminum foil around it. That works pretty good, it's pretty cheap, but not quite as good as these. Sometimes you get some funny colors reflected, but if you're shooting in black and white or something that's black and white, that's easy to deal with. Don't worry about it. Okay, so the theory behind this is you're, you have to catch light from somewhere and reflect that back down onto your logo. Sometimes this can be a little bit tricky. I've actually done setups where I've set up a light just to shoot across the top of everything, not even touch what I'm shooting, just to get the reflector card, just to reflect that light back into it, just to soften it. I mean, it would make sense that I would just take that light and shoot it right where I want it, but it was too much light. So I've taken it, I've shined it right into the reflector card, reflect that light right at just where I want it. It works pretty good. This doesn't really work if you're shooting a metal object like a watch or something. It's not gonna give you that really soft tone on your metal, but sometimes it works for you know reflective logos or just little reflective objects. Now, if you wanna use this as a little bit more of a permanent option while you're shooting, you can put it on a C stand and just get that arm in there right where you need it to be, kind of find your reflection. An even easier way to do that is put a C stand arm in there, put a bendy clamp on that arm and clamp, clamp your card to it. And that's, that's really easily adjustable. You don't have to loosen up five different things on your C stand to get the height and the angle and the depth and everything just right. Get a little bendy clamps. They're, they're kind of expensive, but they're very well worth it if you're doing a lot of studio photography. Okay, sometimes this method can be a little bit problematic because you're reflecting way too much light in there and it's just blowing everything out. This is where I wanna get into my third method. It's the one I just learned about like a month ago, maybe two months ago. The third method that I've been super impressed with are these little battery powered LED lights. You can use that just like you would your silver card, but you don't have to find another light source to bounce off of. You're using your light source as a reflector card. 
It's just genius. They work with continuous lights and they work with strobes. You gotta turn that power up a little bit when you're doing it with strobes, but it works really well. I've been very impressed. The nice thing about these is you can actually adjust the brightness on a lot of them so you don't have to get far away or really close in just to get that perfect reflection. You can just turn the brightness up or down a little bit and it works just the same. You just don't have to worry about trying to find where that light is bouncing from. That's the light, that's the light. You're bouncing, the light is coming from there and bouncing right back in. If you're wondering which ones I've been using, I've got the Aperture Amaranth, uh, I've got the little M9 and I've got the bigger 672. They have worked fantastic. I can't tell you how awesome these are. If you wanna pick up a couple, I'll link them below. So go ahead and click that link and buy a couple for yourself. These lights are incredibly easy to control and you can put that reflection right where you want it. It's so incredibly easy. Once again, this probably isn't gonna work for your entirely metal object, but if you're just trying to get little spots of reflective areas, this is gonna work fantastic. Now, two things that are gonna help you out through this process are shooting with remote triggers. That's either if it's on a cable trigger or a remote uh, radio slave or you're tethered shooting from your laptop. That's gonna help not touch the camera because you don't want the camera to shake or move or just get nudged in any direction. Another thing that is a huge help, especially if you don't have a flip out LED screen as a viewing monitor, you don't have to buy one of these super expensive, color corrected, fancy pants monitors. Uh, you can even just hook it up to your little TV and that, that helps you see where that reflection is coming from. So as you move that light around, you can see right where it's reflecting and get exactly what you need. Okay, I'm not gonna go into great detail about how to put this all together in Photoshop because you probably know what you're doing at this point. But the basics are you're gonna take your shot with your beautiful light without your reflections uh, as your base image and then you're gonna add your one or two, maybe four, 12, hopefully not 12, different reflection images and just layer mask each one of those on as you please. But in any case, that's the basics of how to put that together. All right guys, thanks for playing along today. If you have any questions or comments, please put that down below in the comment section. If you found any part of this video useful, do me a big, big favor. Hit that thumbs up button. It's like, it's over here. It's right next to the one that goes like this, but hit the one that goes like this because that one is better. This one's way better than the one that goes like this. If you must hit this, hit this first. There's also a nice big red button down there about this size, maybe it's over here, maybe it's over here. It says subscribe. Go ahead and hit that if you haven't, and I will see you guys next time. I heard, I heard, Messiah speak aloud, and it shook me from my sleep. Woke up to the eternal promise that he keeps. The light made my eyes dilate as I found a way to the king who was forever wide awake.